I'm Raymond from VNet Singapore, and I'm honored and proud to be invited by um, the esteemed LPU to be part of this seminar to share with you how uh, LPU has able to adopt Moodle Rooms as a solution to revolutionize the delivery of education in the Philippines. Allow me to follow, uh, if you have the program sheet with you, I'll be following this uh, sequence of demonstration that's outlined in this program so that it will be easier for you to uh, follow through my demonstration. Okay. Um, how many of you here are Moodle users? Only one. Administ administrators? Just a few. All right. Okay. If you look at the uh, LPU's uh, Moodle Rooms site, this is what Moodle Rooms is able to revolutionize the user interface. In terms of visually vibrant colors that you can see, it is presented in mini course cards, and that is something that is enticing users, especially the users, to even find out, to try to find out more about what is inside the content. Right? So it is, it, it is motivational from the user interface point of view. And um, as you can see, there's also some, um, if you can see the, the features, there's uh, orga personal organizers. This is from the perspective of a teacher in LPU, right? So you, if you can see, these are the components where it is critical information presented to the educator, all in one location, right? So this act as a personal organizer. You can actually see the deadlines uh, of the, um, I can show you my sandbox. This is the uh, deadlines of the students, all right? Uh, the outstanding grading facilities, sorry, the outstanding grading uh, activities that you as an instructor have yet to complete. Some of the alerts, like for example, if the course has been updated, it will be alerted to the, to the instructor as well as to the students as well. And you can see some of the messages. For example, some students, they like to clarify with what you have presented in the lecture. They can actually ask you a question, right? And this is in the messages section. And it is also, the, uh, this personal dashboard for the instructors, you are able to capture the interaction within the course, right? The interaction between the students and also the interaction between instructors and the, the students. All these are all captured within a, a personal dashboard for the instructor. And uh, Moodle Rooms has also made use of what we call the SNAP team uh, to revolutionize the way information is being presented in a typical e-learning environment. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your feedback. <laughs> Thought I could have uh, rejected my voice. Thanks. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Raymond, Raymond, since since you're showing the look uh, the view from an instructor, so from your experience as a former instructor, yes. Yes. why why is this setup you f you find important or helpful to you? Um, the workflow is intuitive in the sense uh, the course cards. These are the courses that you have been assigned to teach. So everything is in one page. You are be able to access all this critical information within that site. So you don't have, as an instructor, you know, I'm busy with teaching and development of materials. You would find strug time, uh, struggling to find time to organize your, your courses in uh, e-learning. So this is a very good way uh, as a Personally, um, as a ex uh, faculty member of the Mount National University, I find this a very refreshing and uh, productive tool for teachers. And as you can see, the um, all this critical information is all displayed to you, right? The deadlines for the assignments, the outstanding grading facilities is all appearing on the personal dashboard. The the alerts. 
and also some of the messages between students and students and instructors and students. And lastly, the forum post. So this gives you an idea when you log into the system, the level of engagement that uh, these causes uh, is able to command over a period of time. So to me, it's a great productivity and personalized organizer. Um, this is based on the SNAP team concept. Um, it, it is already a plugin that's embedded in Moodle Rooms. Yes. That's right. If you compare this with the standard Moodle, this has free from all the blocks that you have experienced. And this actually reduced the clutter and clarity in the delivery of education. So personally speaking, I like uh, the Moodle room very much because I was previously a system administrator for the standard Moodle. So <laughs> you can see the, yes, it's very, very difficult to find things. This is, this is like, it's so organized. And the good thing is that this is iconic, so it's very easy for students like yourself, you know, uh, professional tutors like ourselves. Yes. Now, if I may add, um, this team is actually very customizable. Um, you just need to uh, take all the things that you need so that uh, if you don't like to see the grading uh, during this time, you can turn it off so that uh, you will not be seeing all the, those uh, things on the side. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, you can simplify those things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very messy. Yeah, that's why, that's one of the key factors why we uh, migrated from the standard model, the open source model, to Moodle Rooms. As you can see, the instructor icon is also embedded within the course. So when students, even before going into the course cards, they would actually have uh, access to the instructor's uh, information. Raymond, can you and also, also can you also point out the, those percentages? Yeah, the, the, the percent, the twenty-four percent. Yeah. Okay, those progress trackers are also motivational from the oh. instructional and uh, students' point of view. In the sense. It is a uh, gamification of the learning experience, right? There is actually a goal set for you. It's like a game where you actually try to uh, cover all the objectives and then you get a certification or award at the end of the day. So, so from the perspective of the instructors, it's able to, con uh, able to track completion of contents and activities by the students. So in a glance, you can actually see the level of engagement that is already in your course. And you can also pin yourself. Uh, you can also pin yourself to indicate this is one of our favorite causes, so that uh, it is easy to even organize the course cards itself. Okay. Allow me to go into one of the causes to look into the actual design of the user interface. It's loading. Um, this is also another uh, way, uh, another good um, benefits of the SNAP team. Um, if you, as you can see, this um, course is organized into either t topical, right, in terms of topics or into uh, weekly content. So it appears as a separate page 
uh, with clear navigation between the pages, as you can see. Is, uh, there are some, there's pagination links that you can access to that brings you to the next section of the course. So it is like an e-book, right, which is um, very um, intuitive for the users of today. Then you can just flip it like a, a page. What we also like with the content, the, excuse me. Yeah. What we also like with that team, with the current team, which is Snap team, compared with the standard Moodle, is that there's no uh, such uh, the clutter is not uh, there anymore. Unlike the previous Moodle uh, open source, there are a lot of clutters in there. Uh, this one, uh, we have a straightforward uh, interface and very clean, so that we ca it can easily be uh, navigated. And also, as you can see, the table of contents always appears on the top of every page. So it also helps the users to focus on uh, each topic, right? So it actually helps the users to break down the burden. Yeah, so it's actually more motivating uh, from the perspective of the students. Uh, let me lock out again and lock in. This is the personalized learning designer in action, which is something that I would like to highlight. This is one of the killer app applications in the Moodle Rooms environment. I would say PLD, uh, personalized learning designer, it is a powerful tool to automate uh, communication, uh, to schedule communication so that you can inform uh, the learners of the expected outcomes and some of the critical information like dates. Uh, happenings and events. Um, you also help to automate uh, course activities using configurable rules, for example. Uh, I'll show you some slides on uh, the PLD. This personal personalized learning designer is something like a, a pro, um, programming interface where you can configure each rule according to three things. The event, which triggers the, the rule. Um, you can set conditions how the, when or how the event can take place and the actions that, uh, uh, when the right conditions are met. So for example. Raymond, you, you shared with me before that you had an actual experience yeah. as an instructor. So maybe explain yeah. that situation. Um, Sometimes, um, as, as instructors or as uh, head of departments, uh, you may not have the choice to choose your students. And I'm sure you can identify with me. Right? Sometimes, on one hand, you have 10-20% uh, of very weak, unmotivated students. And on the other, you have very, very motivated, um, very excellent students. Right? So most of the time, uh, as education, what do you do? For me, most of the time, in order to address this polarity, I would actually go for the middle road, right? And the disadvantage here is that I will miss the excellent students and also the very weak students. But with this uh, Moodle room, this capability, the personalized learning designer, you are able to customize rules to address the needs of these two very um, uh, I would say very diverse group of uh, learners, right? One very motivated and one extremely weak. So for example, <coughs> I would like to show you the programming rules for these two case use cases. This, this, this is the location where you can access the PLD, the programming PLD. 
let me show you how I actually create two different learning paths for the excellent students and for the weaker students so that you make everybody happy and motivated. For example, the weaker students, I actu have actually programmed a personalized learning designer concept where it gives the uh, weaker students some additional help, like a tutorial, right? the remedial materials for the weaker students. Um, and the condition here is that they actually did not pass the assignment, the second assignment. Okay? And the action here is that I would inform the student that um, your performance is marginal and you can actually uh, access some of the remedial tutorials to, to make yourself uh, better. Right? I can also program it to send an email to give them a release code so that they can have access to the remedial materials. So this is what I can do for the weaker students once they, uh, they have failed the assignments. And for the very motivated students, you can actually um, um, propose self-directed learning materials. Right? This is something that what, may, what they will be looking for, especially if, let's say, for example, they have performed more than 80%. So they have access to self-directed learning materials, reference books, and additional uh, materials that other students may not have. So at the end of the day, two different types of students, when they wake up the next morning, they have different access to resources and the learning paradigms. So this is something that um, when I was in uh, Monash University, I don't have that luxury of having Moodle Rooms uh, personalized learning designer. Thanks. In fact, it's a great powerful tool that you can um, program the rules to help students in all um, segments, not just uh, weaker and uh, stronger students. It, it's also used as a tool to communicate, to uh, provide feedback, and also to greet the students upon course lock-in. As you can see, uh, the course welcome message, right? Some of the critical information, like for example, you want to organize some revision classes towards the, ends of, uh, towards the end of the exam. You can actually program it like uh, two weeks before the exams, and then you can inform them of some critical information. So once the students lock on, they will have access to this information. The next uh, feature of Moodle Rooms that I would like to um, demonstrate is the inline grading facility. Meaning to say you can grade the students' uh, work inline. You don't have to download the, the copy, which a lot of Moodle users and administrators, they actually download everything and then they mark. Right? So they, they burn a lot of, they kill a lot of trees in that sense. And um, the the thing is that um, in an uh, online format, when you do inline grading, it is presented in a two-pane uh, environment where on the left is the student's work and on the right is the pane where you can mark the students, uh, you can greet the students. Okay, I would like to show you this. I'd like to go back to the course again.
two sides, doesn't it? Uh, in line closing circuit, doesn't it? We are in the topic of personalized learning designer. And uh, let's go to the. This is where I can access the inline grading facility for Moodle Rooms, the Moodle Rooms grader. As you can see, there are some uh, uh, fillers, filters for you. You can actually uh, look at, for example, assignment two that just now I was talking. Um, and you can click show activities require grading. So this is a good tool for the instructors. Right? You don't have to look all over the website to find the marking of assignment two. So you click show activities require grading for assignment two. And you will, you will be presented with the students that have uh, you have not marked these assignments. Okay, for example, I'd like to look at the performance of trainee five. Okay. This user interface is very good in the sense it uh, affords you the opportunity to use uh, rubrics, right? So um, this uh, creates a consistent platform for uh, consistency in terms of marking, and it also conveys to the student uh, how they can actually maximize their marks and guide them towards the learning journey. So I can give an example that I've built. Uh, this, grid, this rubric is not uh, cast in stone. You can actually develop your own rubrics and you can make use of other universities' rubrics as well. Right? So uh, once you have developed these rubrics, you can also save this as a template for use by other instructors in the same course or other causes. So this is the 20-point the 20 point assignment break into four different um, categories. These are the criteria, and these are the level of performance. Okay, But what I want to show you is actually the inline grading facility, which is at the PDF editor here. So um, students submitting PDF formats of their copy you'll be able to make use of this inline grading facilities to do marking, okay? Uh, for example, you can have a comment. You can write a comment. All right. You can actually uh, underline some, highlight the text itself. You can do a rectangle. You can highlight certain things that you want the students to, to pay attention to, for example. So all these are done in the system, okay? And you can um, forget about your pen. You can actually grade it here, for example. Okay, all this um, will be safe when, when you have finished marking. This will be presented to the user itself. And if you make any mistakes, you can just point it and uh, just point towards the, and then you can you, you can just uh, delete it. It's actually quite easily done. Okay. So once uh, you have done a marking, you can just close it, and this will be presented to the student later on. And after you have marked it, then you can do the grading based on this rubric here. You can just uh, click something like this. And then the system will be able to add the scores and present this in the gradebook for the students. Right? So 
the teachers don't even need to do the mental calculation of the marks itself. So personal, uh, personally, I find this uh, saving me a lot of time, a lot of paperwork, and it actually fastened the, the workflow for grading. And um, if you want to further justify your marking, you can actually add some comments here to justify your marking, right? And once you are done, you can actually save the, the grade, and this will be sent to the grade book itself. The next thing I would like to present is the advanced reporting capabilities of uh, Moodle Rooms as, uh, of, as um, in comparison with the standard model. And I will show you some use cases where it is superior to the standard model. So I will return to course. I'll go back to the course dashboard to access the Moodle Room reports. As you can see, when you are presented with this, uh, when you come to the dashboard, um, uh, the reports, it can show you the chart display for the past seven days. Okay, For certain reason, it's not um, appearing here. I can show you the slide. Okay, these are some uh, reports that is available in Moodle Rooms, um, not uh, offered by the standard model. And it has, one thing I'd like to highlight is that you are able to customize the report according to your needs. So if you have a more technically inclined colleague who is able to customize the admin reports for the management, this is the area you can go. Um, Besides being more graphical, in uh, approach, it is able to support custom S SQL and also bring about uh, engagement reports that is not available in standard uh, model. This is an example of what I've uh, shown you just now. It's not able to show, but uh, the dashboard is able, able to show the most recent activities, some of the recent posting, the assignment submissions, and the quiz submissions Okay, for the past seven days. yeah. So it gives you a snapshot on the level of engagement over the week. And these are some examples of Moodle Rooms reports. Like for example, uh, comparison reports, you are able to compare um, uh, causes within the same category, right? Um, this, uh, this is good in a sense, you are able to see the performance of students across uh, categories of causes and also the performance of the lecturers as well. So if you are a coordinating teacher, you are able to form some um, impressions about the, the level of performance of the teachers in various courses as well as the, the students. So al allow me to go back to the website again. There's also some uh, very useful reports, like for example, the exception reports. This exception reports uh, is useful for instructors in the sense uh, it tells you what the student has not done. <laughs> okay, So it can be really a hassle to find out what the student has or has not done. So this is a good uh, platform
certain reasons, I could not uh, display the course. What, um, what is good here is that um, since you know that the students have not done certain things, it actually gives you the uh, interface for you to communicate directly with the students. So for example, if the students have not submitted the assignments, uh, you can actually uh, click a uh, message to send straight away to the students to ask for the assignments. So that is the advantage of having this exception reports. Okay, I um, apologize for, for this. I'm not able to show the, the user interface but it actually links you to the communication platform where you can directly communicate to the user. The next, um, the next segment would be uh, looking at the LMS from the perspective of a student. So I'm going into the second segment already. to the um, what's coming next for LP. No, In fact, uh, what you see here is what uh, students will also see. Just that uh, some s uh, information is taken away from the student. Um, this is a segment where uh, it's more fun in the sense you can participate. All right, I'd like to talk about the roadmap for the future for LPU, which is um, moving from asynchronous to synchronous learning environment. Um, Collaborate is a superior web conference facility for enhanced uh, scalability. So for institutions such as LPU who wants to pursue distance learning uh, programs, this is an excellent tool to have so that you can immediately scale the uh, operations and address the constraints of the classroom and the distance. Okay, so I'd like to look at uh, Collaborate. This is my Collaborate room. So uh, you can actually use the participant link on the second page the tinyurl.com to actually log in and participate in this uh, session. Uh, allow me to introduce you the user interface. Um, this is recordable, right? So you can start recording uh, whatever that you have delivered uh, as part of the asynchronous learning environment. And here, you are able to to uh, chat with fellow students, for example. Right now I have um, two participants. I'm the moderator. And I'd like to encourage you to, to log in to participate as a participant. Okay, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. So Linda has raised her hand. She's the first student to raise her hand. So you can put down her hand and then you can address uh, right, so that will give you an idea um, the level of engagement. Thank you. One student has already joined. So I, I'm joining uh, using my Android phone. Yeah, you can also join using an Android phone. So right now, I've uh, enabled the sharing of audio and video. So you would like to showcase yourself. You can actually put yourself on the environment. So it's, it's real time. So
great broadcast, just like watching a playback, no interaction. So the solution will monitor the connection, and in case there is certain locations that are slower, it will catch the, 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 the playback, and then it will speed up the playback for that particular student, so that it will bring that student connected up to speed. Um, while while Raymond is, um, is preparing um, continuation of the next step. So while he's preparing, I also want to share that the solution can also help you as instructors to distribute material, plays, videos, for example. And with a, with a growing market like in Thailand, where you have a lot of new locations, and maybe the internet connection might not be as strong, might not be as strong at those locations. Um, what, what this collaborative solution does is that if you want to prepare to stream out a, a, a PDF document, let's say. When you load that into the system, you can actually tell the system when to release that document. So that you might want to reach certain point of your discussion before you set up the document. So that your student at the remote end will not be just downloading and reading that document and get distracted with what you want to engage in. If you want to actually play, back, uh, play out a video, the solution will push the video to each individual in the background and you will wait for your instruction as the instructor to tell the system when to play and if they play that video it will be uh, played out from your local computer so that the quality will be higher and then you will not worry about so much of the connection speed. So so you can lock on to this yeah, yeah. to participate in the collaborate environment. So depending on your device, because there are so many smart devices out there, this you might need to use a mobile app to interface. So not only through the browser you could connect. If there is a no mobile app available for your smart device uh, OS, then you will ask you to download that device. So it might take a little bit longer before you can actually connect. Okay, so this is the uh, participant link to participate. So as, a, as you can see here, the number of participants in the room is five. Okay, um, I would like to open uh, the whiteboard for you to doodle, for example. And I would like to share my blank screen. So you can write on it, for example. You can draw on this. Try. For those of you who have already logged in. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> you can also enter text. T. T for text. Try. So this is asynchronous uh, learning in action. So for uh, what Dr. Carano mentioned earlier, in the future plans, and then the five-year plans, when they actually launch fully online programs, um, something like this could be helpful because then even though you, all your students might be connecting remotely, not, not in Manila connect, uh, location or not in one of their campuses, for example, you could still uh, offer some real-time engagement tutorial interaction with your student to help them through the program. So that is not completely Thank online you. and interfacing with, uh, with the solution. It's unlimited. Uh, the nice thing about cloud solution nowadays, just like all of us using Facebook, there is no limit to how many people could connect to Facebook and see your, your feed. So it's the same concept of design. And all the data is relating to LPU's instance. It's just for LPU and its and their students. So it won't be published publicly. So if you are not enrolled in that program, you will not be able to come in here. Right? Yeah. 
Um, as an instructor or so as a moderator, you can also conduct a poll, for example. Say, for example, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. How is your stay in Thailand so far? A, very good. B, can do. You can actually respond. I can actually start the poll right now. And you tell me, A, very good, or B, can do. So I'm actually opening the poll to you to get your opinion on your stay in Thailand so far. Okay, so you can select one or two. One participant has said very good. One is being good. Two is can do. So this is um, another way to engage the audience and conduct a quick poll. Can you access the poll? Okay, this is because I've allowed audio and video sharing. All right, so as a moderator, I can actually turn it off to minimize the noise background. For example, it's right over here. Right, so just now you have that feedback is because um, I allow you to share audio and video. So I can actually um, take this away from the participants so that the, the participants are not able to share audio and vo video at the same time. Thank you. What about the rest of the nine participants in the room? One or two? So, so again, the earlier example that I mentioned, in case the delivery is done remotely to all the students at different locations, this is a way for you to also encourage some feedback to make sure that they are following uh, the, <laughs> the discussion. Okay, um, I would like to close the poll soon. Anyone still wants to participate in the poll before I close it? Oh, <laughs> trying very hard to get it. <laughs> That's why uh, Dr. Conrado said we will forever be young because we are so ever willing to learn and to learn from each other. This is something I will remember. <laughs> You can also uh, present your PowerPoint presentation materials over this uh, environment. Okay. So, how is your stay in Thailand? Two choices. Good. B is not so good. So I reconduct the poll once again. So this is one way you can build your rapport with the audience, right, with a snap poll. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. I lowered your hands already. <laughs> you can see there's a number attached to the hand. That, that will tell me the, the person uh, in terms of the sequence. Yeah, so I can, I can actually uh, address your needs uh, in terms of the, the, the sequence. Oh, you don't see the poll. But just now, two, two of you responded. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I'd like to continue. Uh, you can also give presentation, okay? In that sense, uh, you can share your application. For example, you can you can share your your uh, you can you can share another screen on your this uh, laptop. Can you see this? All right. So you you are able to share your materials over the environment. And I will stop sharing here. Ah, I turn off the video already. You want me to on? Off, off already. Okay, so this is, uh, it can be in terms of PDF or it can be a Word document that uh, you would like to display on the screen. So I've uh, stopped sharing. Okay, now we have more participants, 12 of you, in this collaborate room. Thank you for joining. Okay. Thank you so much for trying. I will proceed to the next part of my presentation. Okay, you can also share files, for example, right? For example, I've uploaded this uh, um, just now, the, the slides by Dr. Konaido. So you can actually present this, and then you can share with the participants. So for example, I can share this. Can you see this on the screen? Excellent. So you can actually present your presentation materials. <laughs> see something. <laughs> so difficult to, to see something. <laughs> The thing that is dividing me and you is the, is the bandwidth. <laughs> Thank you for joining. All right, so you can do your PowerPoint presentation and you can, uh, uh, yeah, this is one way, or you can present this in a PDF format and you can just uh, go through the documents with your, your learners. Okay, so this is uh, part of the Collaborate facility. Wonderful so far, your experience? Thank you for uh, move this around. So this is one of the key uh, developments, the latest developments in Collaborate. You are able to conduct uh, breakout sessions before you congregate them back to your main hall. And once you do that, uh, you can start. So now, um, the members will all be in their own separate rooms and you can do your collaborate uh, session over there. Okay, So as you can see, there are group one and group two, right? There are four members in each group. Yep. So as uh, for me, I can join group one or join group two. Right? You can actually go inside the group and take a look uh, whether is there any real discussion over there. How again? Have you tried chatting each with each other in the chatting facility? <laughs> you can do that. Any questions for me regarding the collaborate solution? I finish my Thank you. Okay, the yes? Uh, 
X psi? Assign. Uh, yes, you can assign the students in different groups. Just now it was, uh, I would say it's organized by the system, but you can actually do a manual assignment. It is uh, both ways. Yeah, but uh, just now because uh, I've configured it to be uh, being assigned by the by the system itself. But uh, you as an instructor, you can assign different uh, students into different groups. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, it can be assigned ahead of the class. Correct. So as a student, if you are being assigned to join the session, you will receive the invitation. Um, and the, instead of typing in the, the detail, this is quite unusual to engage here. Yeah. So by clicking the link, then you can choose whether you just use a web browser or use the app to connect. So it makes the connection a bit easier, right? Right now, because we hadn't do the assignment beforehand because we weren't, we didn't know you would be here today. So that's why we just gave you the link to log in. So that is not a traditional, normal way of engaging. Here. So I think this solution would be sent to the Yes. So two, two, two way of doing it. It could be integrated with your open source Moodle if your institution is using open source Moodle or through Moodle Rooms. So your student, if they are part of a course that you are teaching and they are part of that course, then they would also receive that invitation through Moodle or Moodle Rooms. But if you are inviting people who are not on that platform, then they could get an email invitation as well. Yeah. Okay, last but not least, um, I would like to present to you the learning analytics platform for Moodle Rooms. This is the latest acquisition by Blackboard uh, to have uh, advanced learning analytics for Moodle Rooms. This X-ray analytics is actually way uh, beyond the Moodle Rooms uh, reports that I've presented in the sense it is a predictive uh, analytical tool that can be used to predict the student's behavior. And from the student's behavior, you are able to map their uh, potential and also facilitate early intervention. So this is something beyond the standard uh, Moodle Rooms that we can offer. As you know, with uh, Moodle Rooms, there's a lot of data that is uh, residing in the system. So, however, most of the data is not being used, right? They are dormant. So X-ray could actually harness some of this uh, data that is embedded inside uh, Moodle Rooms to give you some ideas how you can look at the student's behavior in the past, and you can actually use that system to predict the success of the student. Okay, um, This uh, X-ray is research-based algorithm. It has been tested in the US for at least three years. It helps to calculate uh, subjective data, for example, the quality of discussion. This is something subjective and nebulous. Right. Sometimes uh, as uh, teachers, we find it difficult to, to grade them because it can be both uh, subjective and nebulous. So X-Ray actually provides uh, advanced linguistic analysis and also uh, they have algorithms to assess the level of critical thinking in the discussion forums. And this helps to preempt issues in learning so that instructors can, can take uh, evidence-based uh, decision making into their hands and help the students um, achieve greater success in their learning. Um, I would say X-ray learning analytics looks at four indicators to help the students. Um, the first thing is the level of activity, the level of in participation in the courses, the online courses. So allow me to show you the indicators under activities. Okay, you have um, indicators such as uh, activity matrix. It gives you a broad spectrum of uh, indicators such as uh, when is the, the students are last uh, active, uh, last block in active hours, how long they have stayed uh, in the course, the total discussion postings that they have so far, and some of the regularity of visits. 
because this has been uh, well researched that these indicators actually uh, is able to predict the success of students. So um, X-ray analytics actually make use of the data in the Moodle rooms to extract them uh, so that you can use them for uh, your decision making and also further action by the instructors. Um, it also provides um, insights into things like the course activity by date. So it actually tracks the activity of the students over a period of time. As you can see from here, the blue line actually looks at the, the actual total time spent daily, right? And the gray, um, the gray line actually is the moving averages. It underscores the averages over a period of time. So in this instance, if uh, this is going towards uh, the exams and you can see the, the line is dwindling, this is not very good news for, for the instructor, right? So as an instructor, you may want to intervene somewhere in the middle and remind the students, hey, exam is coming. You know, why is the level of activity so, so low, right? So you can actually uh, use the PLD to actually configure communication messages. Activity by time of day, you can actually analyze um, um, the time that they lock in, the activities. Well, I'm surprised there's no night hours here. <laughs> this is quite unusual. But you can uh, actually plan your uh, delivery by looking at the hours that they are most active. Right? For example, you can put the submission deadline at the time where they are most busy. Okay? Um, this, is also, this is also another uh, useful indicator, the relative activity compared to other students. So this one actually tells you, uh, the dots refers to the amount of uh, uh, activity that the student has spent in the course. So if you compare with other students, for example, uh, there are some students who are very consistent, right? You can see that the bubbles are all the way from week one to week 10. So you don't have to worry about such students. It's those students who, who are active in the first few weeks and then they fizzle off. So these are the students that you want to take special care and attention, right? And if you look at this student, he spends so much time in the beginning and then he, di he disappears after that. <laughs> yeah, he disappears. So you're able, to, as, uh, as an instructor, you're able to access all this critical information so that you can actually do something about it rather than uh, waiting for uh, things to happen, right? So in that sense, you also provide that caring environment that you show to your students and students should be able to respond to, to you. Okay, so that is level of activity. I will show you the discussion, which is uh, an area where X-ray analytics is strong in. It's loading. I think this is an area where even uh, instructors uh, struggle to grade the students. So it provides an avenue for you to defend your marking mechanisms. For example, um, discussion. You can look at the most used words used by the groups, right? That gives you a, a certain indication of the level of critical thinking that this group has versus other groups. So this is a word cloud that is uh, available in the facility. This is what I mean. Um, it's able to analyze using advanced algorithms in uh, research to find out how much is original, uh, how much is the original um, originality of thoughts as given by this group of students. So you can see that those in blue and those thicker lines, uh, they ent actually indicate higher quality of exchange between students, okay? And X-ray is able to extract the data and um, analyze the statements into reflective and repetitive uh, statements and come up with an ind indicator how original are their uh, ideas and also the level of critical thinking. So this is something that uh, uh, standard reporting by Moodle rooms and even Moodle cannot satisfy. Okay, from here you can see there's a high quality exchange between Frank Between Frank and Jason, right? As 
the bubble is blue, right? That's low risk, and the line is thick, me meaning to say the originality and the level of critical thinking is substantial. So this is discussion. Um, the risk status of students, this helps to arrest uh, at-risk students early in the duration of the course. For example, it has a risk matrix that helps you identify at-risk students. Okay, let me show you. This algorithm actually uh, draws upon three data points. The academic risk, which is uh, given by the grades of the students so far. The social risk, the number of posting and the participation level in the activities, online activities. And lastly, the time span. So it's able to um, give you an idea how risky is the students in terms of failing the course or in terms of succeeding the course. And it can also give you a, an idea of the whole population of your course, right? The green one is, the green and the yellow, these are the low, low risk. Yellow is the medium and red is the high risk students. So good to know that uh, this class has got more green and yellow than red. And this is also the risk history of students over um, uh, weeks. So if it's from green, if, if it's green all the way, you have no problem. Right, the student has no problem. But if you can see the bubbles going from green to yellow and then to red, this shows increasing risk behavior by the students. And then you can uh, you can you can um, perhaps intervene early to ensure the students' success. So these are some very useful uh, advanced learning analytics that, as an instructor, as a head of department, you are able to access to gain a broad background of how your students have been performing and uh, the level of engagement that you see in the classes. So w one thing I want to emphasize again on this is that because it's being delivered through a cloud subscription, so when you and your students are interfacing uh, through the cloud on your session, on, on your instance of the learning platform, the data collected could allow you to do further analysis. So you don't need to populate those data or find those data from other system and pull it into this analytic uh, um, engine. It will pull those data directly from the cloud already. So you just run the report. And, and the idea is to provide um, institution like LPU when they push fully online and enable more students to come through the programs online. It allows some more tools for you to predict and forecast how your students are learning. Again, the point about quality that they mentioned. Uh, the solution wants to give the tools to allow the institution to strive for that level of quality that they desire. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Excuse and me, uh, uh, yes. Before you end, uh, I can also project that uh, using the learning analytics uh, we have uh, we can easily generate data or information and this could be a very good source no, in the conduct of any research so I think not not like in a traditional research process you would require statistics no, uh, processing of the of the data but in this case I think this could be a very good uh, forum no, or reference in the conduct of any research, especially research that can innovate or improve uh, the pedagogy or even the behavior of students inside the classroom. Thank you very much, Konarado. With that, I yes, there's a question. Yes. Yes, uh, the learning analytics data can be exported uh, via PDF or XLX files. So basically, I could take, lead, take all the data because I have roughly, let's say, 5,000 students per course. Yes. So I would not want to go through line by line who is yes, yellow, who is yes. red. So yes. I, it'd be, it's filterable. Yes, it's filterable. Okay. Yes, Thanks. that's right.
Um, so sorry, I missed the first part, so I'm not, not sure if you mentioned this. Yes. Um, does this come with the BlackBot solution, or can I just buy this as a standalone um, solution? Um, this right is uh, on top of the Moodle Rooms solution. Okay. So it is uh, standalone as uh, with the Moodle Rooms. Right. So um, it's, it's an add-on solution to it. Got it. So if my, let's say I'm using Moodle already, I can just buy this to integrate with the yes. solution. Yes. Got it. And how much is the subscription? Uh, okay. Nice. Any questions? Uh, please feel free to ask. This is the platform for you. Because there are various um, version of the apps uh, depending on your OS, so if so happen you are running on an older version of the apps just now, then you would not be getting the poll uh, because it depends on the release date. But the the benefit is that if you encourage your student, if you know you want to run a poll and you want to avoid that situation, you can encourage your student to just use the browser. Then the browser is always the late uh, with the latest capability. So. I think some of you just now who connected through the browser was able to join the poll. I think that yeah, was something I wanted to find out just now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I connected to, through the browser. I, I think Patrick, yeah, you can check, but uh, from, from what I... So um, we, we could look into that, but uh, the general feedback just now I got from my colleague was that Maybe that could be the reason. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, not, not more question for now. Okay. So maybe we can ask you after the session later on. Yeah, please feel free to ask me any questions even after this session. So I thank you very much for your attention and I hope I have uh, given you some insights into how Moodle Rooms is able to transform your education delivery. Thank you very much. So as I said earlier, that we're going to finish earlier for this session. So now we come to the end of the session. If you have further questions, please stay up and then ask. We have a lot, uh, many uh, on the guests here that you can they can uh, answer all the questions of yours so thank you so much for taking your time and join us for this session i'm pretty sure that you have learned a lot about moodle room and there's many uh, uh techniques and also learning style that show you for this session so i think you can uh, get all of these ideas and apply to your courses so i want I'm again on behalf of the TCU IEC 2017. Thank you for coming. And we still have another day of session for tomorrow. Please come and join us. We still have many interesting topics and uh, uh, the speakers that are waiting for you for tomorrow. And also today, I want to thank you so much for Dr. Conrado and also Miss uh, Devi. Miss Jayen and Mr. Alex, and also Dr. Raymond and Mr. Ridley. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing all the ideas and also many strategies. So, before you leave the room, make sure that you return the <laughs> survey. Anyone miss out the surveys? Do you know that we have a Nokia gift for you. So anyone didn't get any survey, make sure ask from the <laughs> uh, coordinators and then you can get the survey. So thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Sukhtan Tarungo. So thank you for your time and have a safe trip home. Thank you. See you later. Sadiqa. <laughs> 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 <laughs>